What happened here? <laughs> hmm. Looks like a gas attack. Well, <laughs> does it? Yeah, there is some fiery spots all over the place. Hey, hey, guys! Welcome back to another episode here from the Hermitcraft server with your goat. Um, that is still baffled <laughs> by Gary. <laughs> I was reading through the comments. We're gonna crack this thing together, guys. There were so many suggestions and yeah, I'm just gonna uh, do it like that now. We're gonna, you know, use the guesses you guys post in the comment section and uh, we will try one bit after the other. I'll look for what looks the most. I mean, I don't know, maybe we can organize it in some way with some lists or whatever over on the Reddit. Not sure yet, but uh, I'm definitely not giving up on Gary. We want to figure out what went down, but uh, yeah, to be able to do so, we kind of need to fix the broken clue here. But I also like that there's a random ghast fire here. So I guess we just put random clue 2 here. I have a screenshot of it. So it was, let me quickly type it in. Okay, so that was the original clues. I have very little value. I'm not in caves nor in water. I'm not myself. I'm something else. Don't look for me. You won't see. So um, I'm just picking one of the most suggested ones here. That is the melon block. I threw a melon slice in, in glycerin melon and half of the comment section was freaking out. Oh my god, just throw a melon in. It's easy. That must be it. So I'm yellow and green, a bit of red and white. Yes, on the inside, right? I'm everywhere but hard to find. Kind of fits. I make you rich and satisfied. I guess that's more on the wordplay level, right? We could sell... Um, our melons to villagers and then get rich. We could also eat them though, so that kind of fits. Um, I have very little value, yet yeah, generally, I guess, as an item, indeed. I'm not in caves nor in water, kind of fits, right? I'm not myself, I'm something else. Don't look for me, you won't see me. Hmm, that now doesn't necessarily fit. But who knows, let's try out Melon and we will keep on trying out things over the next weeks and eventually we'll figure it out. Alright, Melon. Gary, do you like Melon? Nope. The hole is getting deeper. <laughs> oh man. Well, I will guess there will be more trying. Keep on suggesting things, guys. Or we maybe get a, a list on Reddit. Oh yeah, before I forget talking about Reddit, of course, today's amazing thumbnail fan, fan art is provided by Redden Sounds Like Ben from Reddit and I have linked their Instagram in the video description. Feel free to hollow at them, say hi, um, maybe they are willing to commission some work for you. Who knows? Check out our amazing fan artist community and support them. <laughs> Still some remains of the pranks going on <laughs> over here. I think um, pretty much Green went in and removed um, everything that was visible inside of Mumbo's stuff from the gas prank. And by the way, thank you guys. <laughs> Lots of positive feedback for the gas prank. I have to confess, you know, I was a little bit unsure. I thought, oh, oh, this might be a little bit too much. I was particularly scared that if we relieved guests here, right, they would start shooting at uh, Scar's tree too much and leaves they could actually destroy. I was not too concerned about uh, structures, you know. But actually, the damage was way less than expected. And afterwards, Messets actually said, you were right, Doc, we could have used a hundred. <laughs> I wanted to do more in the beginning and Mathers talked me out of it. Um, but I think in the end it, it was the perfect amount. Um, not too much damage done and yeah, nice surprise for Green. I was reading through all the comments um, and also on Green's video. People liked it a lot. <laughs> oh yeah. You know what a funny thing is though, uh, talking about that, while we look a little bit on the new additions to our sand area. Oh yeah, look at that. Um, what could this be here? What could this be here? Hmm? Yes, tomatoes, finally. The people that follow me for a while know I'm a passionate hobby gardener and I have 
bunch of tomatoes every year and I really, really enjoy that. And to me, this is my little tomato garden. As I always say, Minecraft runs on the most powerful graphics chip in the world. Imagination. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. So, this is my graphics uh, chip, <laughs> I want to say. This is my tomato garden. I have a little water barrel here, right? And then a little channel flowing into my little plantations. And I imagine here I got my different uh, tomato species and little, you know, breeds I have and so on. Really cool. A lot of old... Um, old tomato seeds and so on. It's cool stuff. It's enjoyable. I enjoyed a lot. And yeah, here's another one, right? And then it would naturally flow over into our little spring-fed river here as well. And then eventually flow down, right? And I think that looks really, really nice here. Cool with the water in the ground and so on. And yeah, kept on terraforming around here. But before, I wanted to quickly tell you what I found so funny before we forget that. So when I was reading through the comment section, it's always a little bit of a thing that the people that don't follow me closely, right, and are not subscribed and just know me as, uh, yeah, <laughs> funnily enough, I always end up in opposition to Green in many, many cases, right, if you look at the uh, storylines in the past and so on. So a lot of the fans that know me, don't know me too much, really think I'm evil. <laughs> <laughs> and some, some, some mean, uh, you know, bad guy. Maybe it's also because um, of how my skin looks. I don't know, but it's always heartwarming to see. Then, then uh, when I when comments like that show up or on Reddit, right? People always say, uh, "Nah, he's actually very kind." And the the op opposite, uh, it's just um, you know a cheeky little thing, uh, role he plays uh, sometimes. And you always need a villain in a good story, right? And I enjoy taking that role, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it's funny for me to read Breaking Kayfabe here a little bit, right? <laughs> I'm not evil. <laughs> or am I? <laughs> Anyways, let's look around here, right? Uh, the idea for the whole build is it's eco. Eco-friendly, close to nature. Um, and yeah, the idea then is also was with the passing here, right? I don't want to have like cobble passing or any really, yeah man-made roads like those i want natural roads that just occur because people walk down here and then it would look like this a little bit trampled out maybe some parts a bit mossed up and yeah a little bit indented as you can see and here you know i use this little trick of having fence posts under the uh, moss carpet here to be able to seamlessly walk up right um, yeah works really well and then on the sides we have like natural stone retaining walls uh, in a sense and I think that works out really well. We did this here to get into the slime shop. Any sales? I don't think so. No, not at the moment. Good, good. I'm going to need so much slime. I'm going to reclaim all of that soon. <laughs> nah, we're going to produce more simply. And yeah, then, you know, small little details like these cool, cozy gardening swing. You know, I'm not the best decorator. So what I did, I was just browsing um, YouTubes and looked for gardening and outside decorations and then uh, I found plenty of kind of similar designs. Gem had one last season too I think, like kind of a swing. And then I just stitched some together but the basic idea of these is often the same. You have kind of uh, campfires on top right, to create this roof and then maybe some leaves and it hangs there and it looks cool. I, I really enjoyed building these small little little decorative thing when I built a lot of these technical things most of the time. And yeah, it turned out, turned out really cool. was hanging out with Jeromos again, as usual, when I built. And it was good times, good times. Here, you know, is another plant pot. You know, probably I'm trying to uh, grow another tree here to plant somewhere soon. You know, kind of, kind of this eco vibe. And I really enjoy that. Um, yeah, here, same kind of trampled path leading um, into the uh, sand store, right? And uh, I think it turned out great. I didn't want to do too much terraforming. I mean, sure, we have moss and some more stone retaining walls everywhere and so on and so forth, but didn't want to overdo it. Um, initially, I thought maybe it would be cool if you have like a boardwalk going along here all the way. So there is kind of a path, but it's still a natural path. I didn't want to do too much. And let's see, maybe I can convince Jevin we continue it to here also. And then we would have this continuing boardwalk from this bridge all the way over to here. And then, you know, come through here. And then eventually 
up here, I would like to build a bridge over to Green, um, where the entity is at the moment, and then we would have kind of a full, nice circle we could walk here along and then go through here, you know, back over the bridge. That would be kind of cool, but you know, I'll need to talk to the others, but this could be one of the longer term terraforming small projects we do here and there to just perfect things in a way. Um, yeah. And that is how everything looks here. I also found some azelia, you know, when caving, um, you know, what is this, spore blossom stuff, you know, hung, hung that up here a little bit. Yeah, I went caving for once. I needed, uh, you know, um, what's it, what is it called, uh, rooted dirt, and that's easiest found under a azelia tree, and you just keep digging, 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 and eventually it was in a lush cave that uh, led to finding some some useful plant matter and stuff down there, you know, like the the small leaves here, you know, flip spring leaves or whatever they are called, <laughs> you know, got some of those and uh, a few big ones too. Um, so those those are um, only able uh, to be found in caves and traded for the small ones. So I got a bunch of them now. Uh, still haven't placed uh, the specific block here, but we could today, actually we have enough netherite. Um, so maybe we'll do that later later on. Okay, so that is where we at, and now comes the question, where are we going? Today is also a very, very glorious day here for me on the Hermitcraft server. Yeah, it was not easy. Wow, lots of copper down there. But after searching far and wide, and really stretching the limits, uh, <laughs> yeah, literally, <laughs> I found the location of our future base and insane project, something that's never been pulled off on the Hermitcraft server. I think something that has never been pulled off outside any technical server alone. With a group, you know, it's different and the whole server coordinated and trying to do it, but I'm gonna attempt it alone. And here we are. Welcome to the center chunk of the perimeter. Oh yeah. All right, let's fly up here with Camera Studio so you can have a little bit of a look. What is so special about this area? Well, I will step by step reveal what we will actually uh, build in here farm wise, but you know, that's a little bit of a concern for later. What we are concerned about right now is, if you look at this beautiful kind of roundish shape that <laughs> forms up around me, we need to remove all of it. All the way down to bedrock. Every single block that is here in a 16 chunk radius. Yes, indeed. Here on the Hermitcraft, we have a 16 chunk rendering distance that makes it extra challenging. That means from this center chunk, if we want to create a perfect chunk that has perfect spawning conditions, you know, if we are inside these chunks or around us, we will have perfect spawning conditions. We need to go 16 chunks in each direction um, to make sure we have that. So uh, it's gonna be a huge perimeter, over 500 blocks, um, um, yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be huge. Um, turns out, when I was looking for this area, because I really wanted this huge river biome right here, right? Right there, you can look at the S3 screen, uh, right going through this mansion here. And I think this is the mansion that was raided by the guys at the beginning of the episode. There was the world border. It was right here. So now I had to go in and say, hey, can we move this world border a little bit further away and it's a hundred blocks pushed out this way now because otherwise, you know, my perimeter project would have not fitted in here. And it's a tight squeeze. Other hermits are also looking for uh, bigger uh, building areas for their so-called mega bases, right? I, I don't really do mega bases, I do mega perimeters. <laughs> and then build a base to it that is filled with farms and all kinds of stuff. Um, but people mostly do huge building projects here too on the server. Scar has massive plans. So, you know, it was a battle for land. Um, and I just talked with Scar this morning and told him, bro, my thing will reach out up to here um, so yeah <laughs> this is the 16 chunk border by the way like roughly this far so it's a long ways out 
right to the center chunk and then we will cut through here and cut off like everything will be deleted here all the water gone everything all the way down to bedrock and even contemplating to remove bedrock all of it with bedrock removal machines <laughs> Yeah. If we do a perimeter, we go, go all out. It is a highly risky project. You know, lots of things can go wrong. We're gonna run a gigantic world either here, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm doing this on the server here. If the server crashes once or if we get a restart or anything, everything will break. And if uh, yeah, it breaks, it will be a huge setback. And I'm already preparing myself to get these setbacks because normally, Pulling off such a full-fledged, full-blown perimeter project is a team effort and you do it on a technical server where everybody knows what's happening. So it's definitely going to be interesting. Just came back to the village uh, and died in a crazy fight with some mobs. Unfortunately, I didn't record it, but I wanted to capture uh, quite a special mob I found here. So here we are. This is Skelly. And it's in, whoa, stop shooting. It's in full diamond gear. Wait, we can actually, we can stand a little bit further back. But they don't shoot us. Yeah. Also, legs fully diamond. I mean, you know, those were more common in the past. Uh, the rarity of those has been increased um, over the years. And nowadays, you don't really see such fully geared skellies that often so yeah i thought i'd stick it in a boat and we'll keep it the price was i was killed by a zombie then <laughs> while doing so <laughs> but no problem um yeah i wanted to feed gary a little bit that was the actual reason we are here um so another one of these very 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 frequent suggestions was hay bale and the actual individual hay as well so we will try that um, and there was very good logical arguments why it could be a hay bale. I mean, you know, hay bale is surely not really red and white, but people be saying, but well, you can craft uh, an, um, target blocks out of hay bales and then don't look for me, you won't see. So maybe target block is also an option, but people were saying, no, it must be the wheat. Um, because, well, there's no target block spread all over the world, but for example, in villages, you would find some some uh, pre-crafted hay bale and, of course, wheat. So, yeah, let's uh, toss it in and see what happens. First, a normal wheat. Gary, you like wheat? Nope. All right, now comes the zinger. Right. Everybody was like, it must be hay bale. This is, I think, hay bale was the most suggested one by far. So, if we crack this now, um, kudos to you. And, Gary, you like hay bale? Well, crap. That actually was my joker. <laughs> I was banking on that. Ugh, back to the comment section. <laughs> All right, I introduce the list. <laughs> Man, this took way longer to assemble than I like to admit. But I was hanging out a bit with the hive mind and we were going through the individual steps and concluded technically there's roughly about three phases of running a world. Either phase one, two and of course three and we need to do uh, all kinds of different things in these phases so phase one is mainly a huge preparation phase we need to have all kinds of stuff for example extra gear that means we want to have at least 10 more um, yeah armor sets for us fully enchanted and ready to go extra tools yeah dozens of pickaxes to dig so we constantly don't have to constantly go back and forth otherwise you don't really make progress and we need a bunch of more elytras partially i went there i went to spawn and went again to iskia's island and bought a second one but yeah we have to go to the end um fire potions because there will be lots of lava and so on and you need an infinite supply of those you will need a lot sand lots of sand and we definitely will use uh, poppy technology to help us uh, with some of the jobs we have to do here but, you know sand is crucial sand will be needed to fill in lava pockets and to um, get rid of certain um, 
Yeah, areas to prevent as much as possible obsidian to be forming, right? That is your biggest enemy in a real world eater. The world eater technology is not just you carpet uh, bomb the area pretty much, right? And then get rid of everything. It is also has a water destroyer that will come in through later and remove layers of water and lava and so on. But there are certain things you cannot um, pretty much break uh, and that is uh, obsidian down there. So that is our biggest enemy. There will be lots of obsidian mining. Therefore, we will also need uh, lots of beacons to speed that up. So sand and sponges. Sponges is not 100% needed. I'll have a look. Um, you know, it's pretty tedious to get sponges. I might go around and ask hermits to lend me their sponges for the project, maybe. We'll see, but yeah, this sponges is a bit of a troublesome thing. So rather work with lots of buckets and sand. Right, but if you can get sponges, also not bad. Then we need uh, finally a decent stock of shulker boxes. I'm not uh, talking infinite amounts like shulker farms, um, you know, scenarios here, but I'm talking a few more, uh, at least a good dozen or so, so we can haul stuff around better. We need food, lots of food, so I'm gonna pretty much invest a lot into uh, Giga Pies. Um, so Ren will be happy when he comes back, lots of diamonds, and then of course beacons. Uh, best, yeah, more than one, so that is another job we need to take care of. Get lots of beacons. And then um, we pretty much, after we prepared all this, maybe we add some more stuff over time. We need to enter phase two. We will maybe get to do some testing today with a small trencher, um, but uh, we need to build a small and a big trencher, two of them. What are the trenchers? Well, um, to build a world eater, you first need to um, build other tunnel bore machines to create some space along the outskirts of the perimeter. I've, I went ahead and marked it out here a little bit. So here we can see one corner, right, and then all these lengths here. And where you can see the scaffolding, that is the center. And then we go out here, and here I left um, sandstone, a clear line, so Scar can clearly see um, up to where he can build. Uh, as far as I can tell, yeah, he picked this huge area here for building. It's also going to be a massive project, not going to spoil anything there, but you know, I know Scar is going to be my direct neighbor here. And um, then, um, you know, we go along here. So we have <laughs> this Mambo's uh, slime farm. It's outside the perimeter, don't you worry. Barely, but uh, yeah, it won't be touched. <laughs> so yeah, we have to create um, about 15 to 16 block wide trenches on one side of the setup and on, on these sides here, on the long sides, or it's the same length, but on the axis, uh, wait, this is south, so um, uh, west-east axis, or east-west axis, we will have the 15 wide ones, and on the north-south axis on the corners, we will have uh, roughly about, I don't know, six or something block uh, wide trenches. And in those trenches um, will then be components of the World Eater installed, which is, if you don't know what a World Eater is, one of the most amazing feats of technical Minecraft, right? A fully automated machine that will help you dig out a gigantic area. And I estimate, if everything goes super perfect, the World Eater will for sure non-stop run 14 hours or something. But I assume there will be problems and uh, it will be a massive endeavor. It will be epic when we run it, man. Can't wait. It's gonna be, yeah, to build the the big World Eater. After we're done with the trenches, those are relatively small machines, just small flying machines with double TNT dupers uh, that uh, make these trenches and they are quick to build and we will have to build them two or three times to be able to fully dig out the side trenches, the small side trenches, because, you know, world height is pretty big and, uh, you know, TNT has a certain explosion time when it drops and you cannot drop it too deep, otherwise it will explode in mid-air. Also, it will take forever for the TNT to drop. You want to have your trenches relatively close to the actual area you want to break out, so we have to move them down and rebuild them uh, two or three times, but that's fine. Um, afterwards, and while we're running this already, constantly, pretty much, we need to grind. We need to have about 6,500 slime blocks. Better have 500 more because there will be some loss during building. 1,200 observers, roughly 1,600 pistons. 
A um, lot of pumpkin, actually. I need to talk to uh, about that with Ren, or we just took up a quick pumpkin farm. I mean, those farms are highly efficient. Mm, so I'm not quite sure when Ren will be back. We'll see how we do that. And um, yeah, redstone blocks as well, 900. So we got raid farms running on the server by now. So I'm pretty sure I can make good deals with some other hermits to help me, you know, get all these elements. We don't need to build farms and stuff for all of that. And then uh, we complete phase two when we have our trenches fully dug on the sides and ready. And then we enter the crucial phase three. The world eater phase which is first of all building the world eater which is insane it's huge um, you can see alone 6500 slime blocks um, 1600 pistons it's absolutely mad um, and then the insane part actually run the world eater that could be a phase in itself because uh, there's so many challenges as it is big um, we need to have my camera account here riding a minecart on the world eater to make sure we have stuff loaded properly at all times. I might need to or I will have to collaborate with other hermits coming here when we do big digging adventures or you know pushes for for yeah, gaining ground. I'll have other hermits here hanging out helping and it will be worth their while because you know aside of all the epic farming we can then do in the perimeter, I can't wait to build crazy high efficiency farms at Y is super low. You know what I mean? It's gonna be freaking epic. We're gonna have output in here. It's gonna be glorious. Never seen before Hermitcraft levels of insanity, right? And then, don't forget about one thing. We gonna be by far, by far, 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 the richest hermit on this server. You know, we've been very successful with our teeny tiny small tunnel ball we had running. Remember, last two seasons it gave us a lot of diamonds when we were going yip 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 yip. So I roughly estimate that we should get at least three to four Schalke boxes completely filled with, um, you know, deep slate diamond ore. Man. Speaking about raining on my parade, I was just about to go on a crazy rant how rich we're gonna be. But in essence, we're gonna be so rich that we can probably build a full-scale goat mother right out of diamond blocks. <laughs> so yeah. Oh yeah, I also have a little um, nether portal here. And um, that is connected to our area. Yeah, on the nether ceiling, you know, over there setup we don't speak about and uh, gold farm and um, here's the gas setup right so yeah that's uh, very crucial so we can go back and forth quickly and i'd say now i should tackle one of the first things um, on the list and that is we have to do a bit of end busting so i'll go and keep you updated and um, yeah see you in a bit <coughs> All right, I'm back at spawn and I'm grabbing all the diamonds I have. And how many is that? 90, 98. Yeah. Huh, too short. <laughs> I made a deal with XP. He was end busting. I went too and we went in two different directions. Looks like the area I went to was mostly looted already. Couldn't find uh, more than one elytra. But XP went in the opposite direction and there it was really good. He told me he got four out of it and I told him I'll I'll take him off him for 25 each. So maybe we can negotiate a little bit and uh, drop the price. Oh, there he is. Hey. Ooh, you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? Hey, have you, uh, Doc, have you met Doc? Yeah, it's epic. Keralis did that to you, right? Yeah, I named him Doc because you know Doc Ock. Yeah, sounds like Spider sounds Man. like a plan. You're gonna keep him. <laughs> oh yeah, he's staying. Yeah, it's it's too epic to to not right. keep. I mean, it's just glorious. Yeah. So, so I he I heard uh, you're in the market for some elytras. Yeah, I need to dig perimeter, and I'm expecting to burn to my death a lot of times and lose my gear. <laughs> so the more elytras I have, the better. Um, I found one. I guess you went in the opposite direction. There was uh, better hunting grounds for Elytra, as I heard. Yeah, I went east. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Don't well, go west. Well, I was thinking about it, <laughs> right? You were offering 25 per Elytra. Yeah. Right? I've been thinking about it. 
Okay. All right. I all got right. I got a killer deal for you. Oh, okay. I'm looking for deals because I might be short so on diamonds a little bit. But yeah. Somebody helped me out when I needed some iron. Yes. Right? So oh, yeah, what true. I'm going to do is I will give you this one. And then for the remaining three, one diamond block each. Wow. That is an insane deal. Wait, that is amazing. So um, you get uh, three times nine, pretty much. Wait. 27. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh, I'm not counting. How many you got by now? <laughs> Uh, that's 18. <laughs> uh, uh, one more. Sweet. Here, <laughs> and a few more for the amazing <laughs> deal. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, no I problem. think I didn't tell my viewers yet. Yeah, you, you need some iron, so I made sure to AFK it over at the iron farm and XP got hooked up. I think for beacon or what, you needed it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. for a beacon base. Wow, yeah. yo, this was the deal of the century. I have to confess, though, I was short two diamonds, and I was a little bit panicking. <laughs> you know, I didn't have the hundred, but this is this is amazing. Thank you well, so see, much. Now you had extra. <laughs> oh, this will help me so much. You have no idea. <clears throat> you Good. will you will be rewarded for that. I will have so many diamonds when I'm done with the perimeter. I will just <laughs> give them away. <laughs> And now uh, you have diamonds, so you can get some enchants. And yeah, that's uh, quite so. important, actually. <laughs> Otherwise, they actually would have to go mining, <laughs> which is ugh. <laughs> um, another thing, yeah. if you like, if you need, mm -hmm. uh, I did also get. Ooh, extra gear is also on my to-do list a lot. Everything, what? <laughs> Everything I went to was looted. I mean, this is pretty much. Uh, that it's it's weird. Like I went out to like thirty thirty eight thousand, yeah, and none of them were looted. Like like the entire way there, I got to like forty thousand. The last one I found completely looted. What? <laughs> yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> wow, this is a, such an insane haul. I got nothing. Like yeah. we're gonna look at my chest later when in the episode. It's ridiculous what I got. I mean, a bunch of Schalke shells, but yeah. yeah, there were there were like two things in here I wanted wow. to keep. It was a pair of pants and a and a shovel. But other than that, like it's it's whatever. I'm probably just, I'll just set these. Actually, I'll probably just leave them there, and then people are free to just come and grab what they want. Uh, I might. Can I grab them all, and we don't tell anybody about it? <laughs> uh, I mean, I I, I I I don't see anything. Like yeah. it's over here. It's, yeah, it's very fancy. Did you take <laughs> the stuff out? You you need it. <laughs> no, go for it. I got lots of shulkers. Oh, yeah. did you did you take the, the, the gear out you needed? The pants and yeah. stuff? Yeah, like I said, I just mainly right, wanted cool. the one shovel and the pair of pants. Okay, I can't take this it. for free here. Like, take at least something. <laughs> 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 and Schalke boxes. Bro, <laughs> you have no idea. You're going to be a rich man. I, I'm going <laughs> to officially make you an investor. This is this is going to oh. help me so much. You know, I'm going to I'm going to give out shares for the for the perimeter diamond hall or something. I am not quite sure yet, but you're going to be rich, my friend. This was oh, smart yeah. investments. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. I can't believe it. This no is problem. Wow. I'm so happy now. Um <laughs> yeah. All right. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll go back and I can knock off a lot of my checklist. This is glorious. Thank you so much, man. Good. Much appreciated. Right, man. No <laughs> Later. Oh, Later. man. This is epic. Wow, guys. I mean, what can you say? XP must be the nicest person in the world. <laughs> this is amazing. I mean, he's been gifting us redstone at the beginning of the season, you know, and I thought, yeah, I, I'll pay him back. You know, he needed a bit of iron. It was not that much. And I had farmed it quickly for him. And now he comes back like that. Man, this is just, well, I, I, I'm still shocked. Okay, look, this is, um, I sorted through the gear a little bit and it's all pretty decent stuff that will not need extra enchanting or what. Spare gear for us here. So six complete sets which is already really nice. A whole lot of shovels and, you know, pickaxes and stuff. I mean, sure, we don't need the swords and there's a lot of spare boots, so we might add a few more armor pieces, but that is a huge, huge start already. That will keep go keep us going for a while. I hope I will not die like dozens of times. And then this is what I got. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, uh, you know, XP went in the better better direction there. 
I mean, I got this one Elytra, but we got four additional ones, plus uh, the extra one we bought from Iskal, which is already enchanted. So yeah, that gives us also a nice uh, setup with Shulk, uh, with Elytras. We need to enchant them all, obviously, and make sure they all have mending and so on. No problem, but you know, as we can buy um, emeralds cheap now, um, <clears throat> we can definitely easily get a lot of enchanted books from our villages which are not optimized but I was banking on somebody making a raid farm and then um, you know emerald blocks become inflationary and then it doesn't matter if you optimize your villager trading or not you can just spam emerald blocks and we got that now I got some chorus flower one dragon head one saddle and one lousy helmet <laughs> <laughs> I felt so depressed I even took the brewing stand. At least one diamond horse armor was left back. And a very crucial item, beetroots. We need to do something with that. Yeah, we need to feed that Gary because a lot of you guys also been saying beetroot seed it could be. And yeah, and I got this, the Schalke shells I got. It's all right, um, half a stack of uh, Schalke boxes. And we also need to give five back to Cub. We cannot forget about that. He landed us some uh, two weeks ago. All right, but that is a pretty decent start. I mean, we can check off some things of our list. Oh yeah, sand we can check off too. I'll show you in a second what I did for that. So sand is done. Then um, Schalke boxes, done. Um, extra gear, best netherite. I don't think we checked it off fully yet. I might try to get uh, more gear. I can easily trade for some more with my villagers, right? And then extra tools. How many pickaxes do we have here? Can that count as extra tools already? I mean, it's quite a bunch for a start. I mean... Hmm. Elytra and rockets. Well, we can check off Elytra, but not really rockets. So let's leave it open yet. We need to maybe find a good bulk deal with Javin or so. Or, or we just buy. Um, we shall see. But I think extra tools for now is checked off the list. Um, fire potions, no. Sponges, food, rocket, uh, buckets and beacons. And kind of extra gear here is kind of checked off too, I have to say. I mean, you know, that's, that's a start here. Hopefully, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So that's already pretty good here, I have to say. Technically, elytra and rockets we could check off the list for now too. Now, nah, let's do that when I have them fully enchanted. So, um, we have a nice process going on here. Oh, wait, I need some more firework rockets. Yeah, I don't have many. So, we definitely need to talk to Jeff and maybe get a good deal, a bulk deal. All right, let's go back to spawn and I'll show you what I did for our sand system. Obviously, um, we want to use poppy technology, right? And um, yeah, therefore, we need a sand pushing system. And I installed that now at the sand shop um, in a strategic position. <laughs> and also, you see roughly how far it is to spawn from here, right? When we fly in like that, gives you a good idea. But yeah, this should work. So we installed an item pusher, poppy technology uh, item pusher. And that should feed us sand uh, so we can, you know, dry the waters there uh, so we can get our first trencher running. There's a bit of a lake we need to clear. But what I installed now down here is a standard uh, poppy technology item pusher. It is hooked up to our sand storage above and it's emptying it out. Um, we fill in this dropper here with doppel hopper speed and then, you know, in here we will have our shadow block item, the sand stack. I was uh, shadow now, uh, poppy now. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we should be fine. Um, yeah, but first we need to get more sand. So, yeah, still poppy technology will be in action now. I just fixed all the shovels and uh, I have one in offhand too. And now it's time um, to do some sand shoveling to fill up our storage here a little bit so we can start working filling in water. All right, it's the next day now, real life, and I've been on an insane grind overnight. Didn't get much sleep, but yeah, we made huge progress. Check it out. Over here, oh, down there, better say, in the sand storage, I was going through in total nine sets of, uh, you know, shovels. Fixed uh, my three shovels three times. 
and that led to a huge amount of sand so far. I think it was like over two hours of sand shoveling easily. Like all these double chests are filled and you know above here and yeah slowly but surely and then we have I think that should be it yeah. So we have several double chests of uh, sand now and yeah as we know we have an item pusher, a poppy stack item pusher here now right and all that is left to do I have a poppy stack in my inventory here is we gotta put that bad boy in here and now if you flick this lever and as we also you hear the clicking right the chunk loader here is running um, so this will be accessible from everywhere on the server and in theory now we should have an infinite stack of sand now well as infinite as our storage pockets are deep yes indeed good um, we're getting sand refilled and let's test it again just to be sure bip, 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 bip. Yep, that is exactly what we need. So on the sand front, we did very, very, very good. But not only on the sand front. Um, let's get back to our, yeah, perimeter. Wow, that sounds so cool to say that. <laughs> so look at this. Par damn. Oh yeah. Two double chests full of slime blocks. That's over 100 stacks. That's enough to... Yeah, check this off the list. So slime farm's really good. I've been, you know, I've been always AFKing it and had good slime store. About, let's say, three quarters of a double chest of blocks already. And then just AFKing overnight um, did the rest of the job, which is really, really cool. Um, wait, where is my glow ink? Put it somewhere. Oh yeah, I've just been chopping wood. Um, here. We can check off one thing off the list. That is slime blocks, 6,500. That is done. But I also realized, aside of the normal pistons, we need 800, about 800 sticky pistons. So we will need a bit more slime, but that's all right. With our slime farm, four chunk slime farm we did, uh, we're really, really rocking it. And yeah, other than that, um, I was chopping wood like absolute crazy, like getting wood for the pistons. Um, and yeah, you know, for future, because there's so much wooded area around here, I pretty much deforested that complete island down there. Um, that was my goal to do that first. And I think now it's good enough with the grinding, although we <laughs> gotta put way more work in. Now it's time to have some fun. And the fun would be testing our first trencher here. And I thought about it for a while. And yeah, the first trencher gonna run from here, and it's for a minor trench, not so wide, all the way across here. Pretty much cut through the mountain and, um, you know, all the way and then go back and forth here. I migrated my cam account now, finally, so I can have that on the server now too. And we can spectate the minecart that will be on the uh, trencher. And um, that way we can always keep it loaded properly. So to make sure nothing breaks, right? It's really crucial. So yeah, what that means is down there below this mansion, um, yeah, here we have this water pool or this water area. And that's what we need the sand for. If you want to fly through here and trench, we got to make sure there's no water because you know water will dampen the explosions, will flow down into lava and will create, uh, you know, a lot of problems. So what we're gonna do is, gonna go ahead with our infinite sand stack here, and we're gonna start filling in, roughly in that line where we will have the trencher, it's gonna come, come through roughly about here. And then obviously it needs to be very wide. Um, so let's get our super stack back. It needs to be very wide, uh, because or relatively wide, because TNT has a blast radius, right? And yeah, now I'm just gonna hang out here and uh, drop sand into the holes and then wait for... Hey! What happened? Ah, okay, it was just a glitch, visual glitch. I thought the poppy connection had broken, but by just simply clicking we updated it again. Okay, but yeah, I'm gonna use the sand now to really fill in the area nicely.
Well, crap. <laughs> yeah, I saw it coming. Should have built it a little bit higher. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, what happened is TNT, um, the distance between the, the uh, what we call it, mountain here, right, and the TNT was a little bit too less, and then TNT got randomly shot up and exploded, and exploded right behind, <laughs> behind the trencher. So that's good, you know, um, it's all learning by doing, testing some things out. I removed the trees on top here, uh, but uh, yeah, that was not good enough. It was uh, very unlucky as well. We could have gone through here, and if we made it through once, um, then probably we would be fine. But now, um, yeah, we have to rebuild. No problem. Those trenches are cheap, <laughs> and we can definitely give it another whirl. But whoa, it is causing a very, 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 very nice trench. <laughs> exactly what it's supposed to do. Oh, man. All right, this was the first taste of glory. And yeah, talking about glory, I hope you like the new sound. <laughs> A new banger made by Jono, the Go Tapes, and uh, the second track for that. Um, we're putting them together, it's gonna be epic. And yeah, when I look at the water that's coming out there now, I feel I need to get my hand on sponges uh, to have a little bit to, you know, be able to go in and clear these uh, little water breakthroughs and water leaks we have, because one individual water source can create quite a mess. And you know what? Once again, the X to the B to the C came for the rescue and says, hey, yeah, um, I got some sponges too you can lend. I put them at your shop. So, yeah, we should be able to grab a few sponges there too and be fine. But first, let me quickly grab the remains <laughs> of the flying machine. Just a few pistons uh, and slime blew up. Not a biggie. I don't think it would survive uh, down here on the floor. But while we're here, I should actually go through and just soak up some cobble. Because I'm really running low on cobble and if I need a lot of pistons, I think this is the way to do. Don't neglect the cobble collection while we're here. It's actually pretty smart. Oh man, there's emeralds here. Yeah, I'm gonna go through and um, yeah, rebuild and then we fly again and then I show you the design in detail <laughs> before it blows up. <laughs> Okay, I stopped the time for rebuilding the machine, which is also quite interesting for us because, well, we will have to rebuild it a few more times, uh, digging out this trench, but it took me about not even 10 minutes. Like, it's really fast to build. Here, have a look. Um, you need all these blocks. It's a self-returning uh, flying machine, two-way. It will go back and forth. And yeah, here, um, via those uh, obsidian blocks, you stop it, and you need these dirt blocks here too. Um, to really power the machine flying back. You see the observers, this one is facing this way too, right? And one tip for building, um, place this uh, iron trapdoor before you place this observer, otherwise you can trigger this piston and then send the whole machine off, so that's, uh, make sure to always place this first, right? So just build up this slime pillar here, then get the trapdoor in and then observer. All right, and yeah, that's the machine. The front part here, just two fences on top of each other, coral, you need this solid block here, this is important for update order. And yeah, let's give it a whirl guys, let's give it a whirl and see if everything works fine. Get in there. By the way, a small little tip for you, um, in my other minecart, it could also be in the minecart like where I am, my camera account is riding. Okay, it's working. My camera account is riding with us, that means even when I exit the machine here, you'll make sure, um, yeah, the machine always stays loaded. As a minecart is considered a living entity, a camera account can actually mount it, right? That's how why you can also use minecarts to kill stuff with entity grabbing. So yeah, let's use our other camera account. <laughs> now we got two, pretty much. And have a look here. And I have to say, this looks pretty good. Yeah, the server is struggling at the moment a bit. Um, Tango was AFKing for two days now at his uh, Witter Skeleton farm and it's really taking a toll on the server. Flying is already painful. That's why you need to build extremely overpowered farms 
that you only run for a short amount of time. Everything that needs to run for hours and hours is always a problem. But, you know, you cannot always build super high efficient farms. The farm Tango built is already really good. And it's then always, as usual, not one player alone. It just adds up. But yeah, this machine is really hammering out a pretty nice trench. And, um, you know, there you can see it as well, right? Um, you want to be low down, so you have quick explosion succession, but you want to be at least 20 blocks above ground to be really sure. Back there, our little explosion. Let's see, we have to go over a little bit of um, raised hill here again. I'm trying to, I'm willing to gamble, you know, just blow up this little bit here. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we shall see. Okay, where we at? Machines coming in there. Shaving off everything nicely here, also at the mansion. And, I mean, you know, this is just the smallest trencher we built. It's got to be a really nice progression, right? Um, also, yeah, let me, yeah, the audio, need to crank that down. Uh, block sounds off for now, real quick. Otherwise, it gets really annoying. <laughs> Wow, okay, yeah, trencher works good. Now we're entering the da dangerous area. And so far, so good. A few water puddles here and there, as you can see. Always normally worse to get out of the trencher right away now and clear this water. But we just want to go back and forth once and uh, want to uh, test if our return station works properly. Return station is pretty much just two obsidian blocks there. Okay, now we're getting a bit into the danger zone. As you can see, right... TNT lies around uh, a little bit elevated and then uh, yeah, detonates at different time. Uh, yeah, see, this one got launched. So yeah, now here is where we blew up last time. <laughs> Let's hope we can make it through, please. It was really unlucky that one really freakishly flew up right behind our machine here. Oh, 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 some are getting launched. Okay, this is really dangerous here now. We're really low. Let's see if it's even viable. Oh, 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 TNTs get launched. Please, please. <laughs> Don't launch up too far. Yes. Okay, I think we made it through. That's the most dangerous bit here. These trees be not my demise. Ooh, that was bad. All right, all right, all right. Good, good, good. We made it through the most dangerous area. Okay, now we will see if we can actually uh, make a return. It is super satisfying to run a trencher like that. And imagine how satisfying it's gonna be when we run the whole world eater. Oh my god, it's gonna be, it's gonna be amazing. Can't wait. Even the three white trenches will be pretty cool. But yeah, this um, is going fine now. But you know, the further down we get, the more water, the more lava, the more complications. But for now, we should be able to eat through the world here really quickly with this bad boy. Such a satisfying scar in the world. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> All right, we are approaching the return stations. You can see also the positioning of those. The machine is coming in like that. And yeah. Boom. Up there. Stops and we're going back. Perfect. I'm really happy. Can you sleep, please? Riding, <laughs> riding a hell machine. Ah, uh, not near bed anymore. Well, okay. <laughs> Maybe somebody can sleep. I just don't want sky rats spawning in on me, you know. That's the last thing you want. All right. But I think we're good. Guys, I'd say <laughs> we wrap it up for today. I'll do a bunch of trenching here, play around and test. Maybe we do a little live stream, a little bit of a trenching live stream. That would be fun. We have two small trenches to do on the south and north side, and then wider trenches on um, east and west side. Thank you. Very, very nice. Okay. <laughs> Glorious. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I see you in the next episode. Make sure to check out Jono's channel soon. The GOAT tapes will be released. And I think this is kind of an epic shot to end the episode. 
Bye, guys.